I cannot believe that after just about 30 minutes, maybe 40 minutes of flying, I can now do this. Oh sh! Oh sh! I crashed. Wait, before we continue with the video, I have an important announcement to make. Surgeon Chow is hiring! We are looking for driven, like minded individuals to join our growing team. But wait, you might be wondering why would I want to work here? Well, let me show you. You get to work here with some of the most incredible creatives. You get access to incredible studios like this and all of this cool equipment. Hey, I'm trying to work here. Can you get out of here? What the? You also get free parking. Wait, get out of the way. We even offer a grooming allowance. Yeah? No? Okay. Even coffee from our local Kopitiam. Thanks, Jerry. So, are you interested? Hit the link below to see what positions we have available. In recent times, I don't think that there is a single cinematography tool that has impressed me as much as the FPV drone. The kind of shots that you can get with a drone like this, thanks to its unparalleled agility, is quite literally mesmerizing. I was hooked, you know, I wanted to learn how to fly FPV drones. But then when I went down the rabbit hole, well, it was a lot more daunting to start than I thought. The main thing here that I had to get over was the skill floor. Unlike most modern drones that basically fly themselves, FPV drones are about as manual as they get. There are no anti-collision systems, no preset moves, heck, they can't even hover. That means that everything the drone does is down to the pilot's skill. And given my track record as a drone pilot, there was some cause for concern. In fact, before you even get into the air, you also need to know how to assemble your FPV drone. And let me just tell you, they do not snap together like Legos. Then there's the cost of getting into it. Conservative estimates put a set with the drone, goggles and controller to be about 3,000 ringgit, which is about the same price as a DJI Mini 3 Pro. Only that comes fully assembled and with a whole host of modern safety features to keep it from ending up in a tree. If only there was some way to put some of those smarts into an FPV drone, make it really durable, and then make it ready to fly right out of the box. Like, wouldn't that be the perfect beginner FPV drone? Well... This is the DJI Avara, and it's the company's brand new FPV drone. They've launched one in the past, but that was far more serious, you know, less beginner-friendly looking model called the DJI FPV. The Avada takes a slightly different approach. On the face of things, it looks like a killer recipe. It's a tiny, agile FPV drone that the company claims is built tough, but also comes with enough of DJI safety features that it can, you know, do stuff like hover, return to home, and even has an air brake feature to save you from sticky situations. To cap it all off, you won't even need to learn how to fly with sticks because it's compatible with DJI's motion controller that uses a bunch of sensors to detect your hand movements for what the company calls intuitive flying. All of this sounds almost too good to be true. I mean, motion controllers, you know, will this actually work? Well, yes. <laughs> Of course, it did take a quick minute to get used to the sensation of flying and the sensitivity of the inputs, but it's crazy how intuitive flying like this is. In your field of view, there is a little circle in the middle of the screen that you can move by twisting the controller. The idea is simply to point the circle where you want to go and squeeze the accelerator. 
The drone will literally take care of the rest. It'll gently bank over long sweeping corners or duck quickly between trees depending on how quickly you flick the controller. And it is a wrist motion that we're talking about here. You don't want to move your whole arm because not only does that take more effort, but your drone won't respond as quickly either. If you want to separate the drone's flying from the camera's frame, you can enable the head tracking function in the new DJI Goggles 2 so that the camera will point where you turn your head, while the drone will fly in the direction you point your controller. In theory, it should work quite well, but in practice, this isn't really as reliable as I thought it would be. It's not as predictable when you're combining both movements, and I found myself turning this off almost immediately. Though, speaking of the goggles, these new goggles too are incredible. I'm someone who gets motion sickness from VR goggles all the time, but the screens, response and refresh rate on the DJI goggles too are really good. They use tiny micro LED displays that you can adjust focus with by twisting the adjuster knobs at the bottom and adjust field of view by moving them outwards or inwards. The headset is also incredibly light for the kind of quality and range that you get from them. In an open plane, for example, we were able to go well over one kilometer before the signal started to degrade. Okay, so what makes this really scary is that I believe this is a digital signal. So what happens with digital signals is that they are all ones and zeros, which means that if you lose the signal, your screen just freezes. And that is absolutely terrifying. Oh sh! Oh sh! I crashed. The signal disconnected. Yeah. Where did you crash? Oh f! I crashed over there. Yeah, it says two there. Well, we need to go and recover it now. It's at the housing area next to SS2 Mall. Look at the sky, dude. Fingers crossed, it's just like at the side of the road. But who knows? Is that it? Is that it? Is that it? Is that no, a drone? No, no, no. Do you see a drone? Do you see a drone? No, no, no. Here, right? Let us pop the car. Yeah. 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 Oh my god. Oh my god, you're the savior. Dude. Thank you so much. Oh my god. Yeah, yeah dude. It's expensive. We were coming up here and then just lost signal. And it went. It's alive. Is it is it damaged? Quite a tanger. Now, maybe I was being a little bit of an idiot here flying in a dense city area, but having reviewed the footage, I don't think it's entirely a pilot skill issue. Halfway pulling up, I basically lost all control of the drone and couldn't redirect it as it was hurling towards the building. But you know, that happens with drones sometimes. What I was most impressed with was the fact that the drone survived the more than two-story crash nearly unscathed. There wasn't even a broken propeller in sight. Yes, the prop guards were scuffed and the battery lost its power button, but the drone itself was fine. And this wasn't the first crash we experienced. The thing hit the deck more times than any of the other drones I've flown, and yet it's still chugging along just fine. There was even an instance where Sophie flew directly into a tree and then the drone just bounced off and hovered in place, ready to fly off again. Yeah, so remember how DJI said that this drone was robust? I believe them. After that crash though, we decided to hand the drone off to someone a little more experienced with FPV drones just to get a gauge on how this compares to, you know, a normal FPV drone. This is Sharil and he's been flying FPV drones for over three years now. Initially, I thought he'd be disappointed by, you know, baby's first FPV drone, but to my surprise, he seems to like it. Although he was already accustomed to flying with sticks, you know, he still picked up the motion controller almost immediately. He notes that the best thing about the Avada has to be the camera. Unlike most FPV drones that have separate cameras for flying and filming, with the Avada, what you see is what you get, which makes it super easy to frame shots. They were also very impressed with the battery life of the Avada, which can last a little over 10 minutes on a single charge. Their drones max out at only about 7 minutes. What's more, since it was a smart battery, the remaining charge is displayed in percentages, while typical FPV drones require the pilot to monitor the voltage so that they don't overdrain the battery. 
Obviously, this fancy new tech comes with its own set of limitations. For starters, the battery is about as proprietary as it gets. Yes, you do get the convenience of charging it with USB-C, but you're probably only going to be able to buy new ones from DJI themselves. Then having one camera to do both flying and recording means that there's no room to upgrade the camera on your drone. On a regular FPV drone, you can just swap out the camera for a newer model or a 360 degree camera or anything with a light enough payload. With the Avara, you're stuck with what you get. Luckily, it is a pretty decent camera. It will do up to 4K at 60 frames per second with both Rocksteady and Horizon Steady as well as the Cinelite color, which means it's pretty much on par with most of DJI's consumer drones. Just, you know, don't expect mind-blowing cinematic quality here. So, is the DJI Avada the beginner's FPV drone? Well, I mean, I came into this review being a complete novice, right? I could barely fly regular drones without crashing, and I definitely have never flown a FPV drone before. But after just a couple of sessions, I was making moves I never dreamed I'd be able to do without hundreds of hours of experience. And the more I flew it, the more confidence I had to try new and riskier maneuvers. It's crazy how fun and intuitive it is to fly the Avara, even if you're a complete beginner like me. I have no idea how DJI has done it, but they have, and I'm completely hooked. Though I think the most underrated feature about the Avara is that it can also grow with you. As great as the motion controller is, I foresee a point in time where the basic movements that you can make with it become a limiting factor. You know, for example, with the controller, you can't dive buildings or do flips or any of that fancy shit you see experienced pilots making. But if you do want to graduate from the motion controller to something more serious, you can do that with the Avada too. It'll pair right up with the regular DJI FPV controller too and give you access to a full manual mode so you can do all of those complicated maneuvers. And yet, it'll still have some of the useful features to keep you safe, like the ability to bail out of a flip by hitting the pause button, or have your home point displayed on your goggles hood. What's more, Sharil also says that the drone should be quite easily repairable. The propellers and rotors, for example, look pretty standard to him, so you should be able to swap them out if they do get damaged. It's definitely my favorite product to come out of DJI in a really long time. You know, nothing beats the thrill and excitement that the Avada can offer. And I'm not even using it to its fullest potential. The way I see it, the biggest hurdle here is probably the price. So if you want the combo that I reviewed, which is the ProView combo with the DJI Goggles 2, the motion controller and the drone, that will set you back 5,899 ringgit. But you can pick up just the drone for 2,499 ringgit. That's a lot of money and that's probably a lot more than you would spend building your own FPV drone as well. But the Avada comes, you know, right out of the box, ready to fly. It comes with built-in smarts. And as far as smiles per ringgit goes, it's kind of hard to beat. Well done, DJI. Like, I mean, I think you've hit a home run here. Like, if you can find a way to um, also make the price more accessible with future models or maybe a future discount, I think you're going to have people lining up around the block to get it. All right, that's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, I really enjoyed my time with the DJI Avada. Um, I hope you enjoyed the video too. Like, I would have loved to fly it a little bit more, but halfway through the review, I actually fractured my hand, so I can't fly anymore, which is kind of sad. But it was a lot of fun, uh, and I hope you enjoyed this journey as well. Let me know what you think of the DJI Avada and if you have any FPV drone experience at all, you know, leave them in the comment section below. What did I miss? Let me know. If you like this video, make sure you give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel and also follow us on Instagram, TikTok, Facebook. We're on all the social media platforms. Then hit the notification bell icon so you don't miss future videos or you can visit us at our home on the internet at soyanchinshaw.com. Until the next video, I'll see you then. Bye!